Last time, we looked at the different types of program memories that you can find inside of a microcontroller. In this video, we will look at four different data memory options. Before we begin, recall the difference between volatile and non-volatile memories. A memory is volatile if it loses its contents or forgets after power is removed. A non-volatile memory is the opposite of a volatile memory. Non-volatile memories retain their contents after power is removed or lost. Historically, most microcontrollers have used volatile data memory. For example, if a Blu-ray player is unplugged and then plugged back in again, it may not know what time it is anymore. The data for the time is lost when the player lost power. More recently, some microcontroller manufacturers have been providing options for non-volatile data memory also. The first type of data memory that we will look at is Static Random Access Memory, or SRAM. Note, when talking about microcontrollers, people often just say RAM when they're really referring to SRAM. Static RAM is relatively expensive to manufacture. That's why traditionally, microcontrollers have often featured 8 or even 16 times as much program memory as SRAM data memory. Once the data is stored in SRAM, the microcontroller can work on other tasks. Static RAM does not need constant maintenance to retain its contents. This is unlike dynamic RAM or DRAM, which we will look at next. Static RAM data memory, however, is volatile. If power is lost or removed from a microcontroller, all of its SRAM contents will be lost. SRAM is known as a random access memory because it allows the stored data to be accessed directly in any random order that you choose. In contrast to SRAM, other data storage media, such as hard disks, CDs, DVDs, and magnetic tape drives, will all read and write data only in a predetermined order consecutively because of the mechanical design limitations. Therefore, the time to access a given data location on a magnetic drive will vary significantly depending upon its physical location. Next up, Dynamic Random Access Memory, or DRAM. In some ways, DRAM can be considered cheaper than static RAM. Have you ever heard of someone saying a computer has 8 gigabytes of memory? They're saying the computer has 8 billion bytes of DRAM memory. Compare that to the 1,000 or even 4,000 bytes of program memory that you may find on some microcontrollers. However, it turns out that the technology used to manufacture DRAM memory does not work well for the rest of the microcontroller, and it can become cost prohibitive to mix the two. In addition, data stored in DRAM memories will eventually fade, even with a robust power supply. Therefore, data stored in a DRAM memory has to be refreshed periodically. This dynamic rewriting of the DRAM data can require a significant amount of software, and therefore, DRAM is not often used in most embedded applications. In any event, like static RAM, DRAM is volatile and its contents would be lost in any case if power is removed or lost from the microcontroller. The next data memory type that we will look at is electrically erasable programmable read-only memory, also called EEPROM, e squared prom or simply e squared. While an electrically erasable, programmable, read-only memory may seem like an oxymoron, e squared prom is a very popular technology for data memory. This is because e squared prom is a non-volatile technology. When a microcontroller loses power, e squared prom will retain its contents. However, this technology is much more expensive than traditional RAM data memory. Therefore, while a microcontroller may have 32,000 bytes of program memory and 4,000 bytes of SRAM data memory, it may only have 256 bytes of e squared prom. Older microcontrollers often did not have any squared prom. Finally, it is often non-trivial or relatively difficult to write or store data to an e squared prom data memory. Therefore, microcontroller manufacturers have looked for better alternatives to non-volatile data memory. The most recent microcontroller non-volatile data memory that has been developed is called Ferroelectric Random Access Memory, or FRAM. While relatively new, FRAM has several advantages compared to the older data memory technologies. First and foremost, FRAM data memories are non-volatile. That means they do not lose data when your microcontroller loses power. This is a significant advantage over traditional static RAM data memories. Next, as we mentioned in an earlier video, because of the way it is designed, FRAM can serve as a unified memory, both for program memory and data memory. This greatly simplifies the microcontroller design and usage. And as a result, it ends up being much easier to use FRAM than traditional e squared prom data memories. Because of these advantages, FRAM is poised to become the next standard for microcontroller memories. As mentioned before, the microcontroller we've been using throughout this class on the Launchpad MSP430 FR6989 is an FRAM memory. In summary, there are a number of different options for data memories in microcontrollers today. 
SRAM, has been the mainstay for data memories for several decades of microcontroller development. Here, we have struck through DRAMs because while they are popular for external memory chips, they're essentially never integrated inside of a microcontroller today. e squared prom is a newer popular data memory option because its contents are not lost when power is removed from a microcontroller. However, the expense and relative difficulty inherent in using e squared prom has spurred the development of the FRAM memory technology, which works well for both program and data memory types. Along with the last video, this concludes our look at the different types of microcontroller memories. Up next, we will look at the types of microcontroller features and functions that are generally categorized as peripherals.